Hey everyone, it's Autumn. I'm actually going to do a video today um, about a couple of things. It's going to be pretty much like a, a how to get started on cleaning out your collection and condensing your collection along with how to keep your collection condensed um, with a little bit of my um, adding in like my no buy and my beauty buying um, rules and stuff for myself and all that fun stuff. So it's kind of like a multi... Um, purpose video but I just hope somebody finds this helpful and or interesting in the least so the first thing um, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started with and um, I just want to go ahead and say that anybody who has those huge collections I don't look down upon those people um, it's not like I think oh my gosh you know you guys are so wasteful you're never gonna use that because I see people comment on that and I just want to say People can spend their money on whatever makes them happy. Um, you know, it's not, it's not our business. But if you're someone who's kind of like in the same category as me and you have a lot and you feel like you don't need it and um, you just feel like you purchase too much, then um, maybe you might find this helpful. So this isn't to say that what anybody else out there is doing is wrong. So I just wanted to go ahead and put that out there. Um, you know before I got any comments and I'll be the first person to admit that when I watch people's makeup collections and they have like hordes and hordes of makeup and especially if it's like beautifully organized I love watching those videos like I love watching um, makeup never sleeps she did a makeup collection I absolutely loved it I loved watching um, uh, Tara baby Z um, she has like a phenomenal makeup collection which I don't think she's shown the full thing she might have but she keeps hers in actual like tool chests I mean just phenomenal so I just think it's great um, you know if that's somebody's passion and they invest their money in it that's great um, but for me um, I'm just gonna go ahead and start in with this um, I've realized that makeup really isn't like a true passion it's something I really enjoy but it's not really um, something that would make or break my life if that makes sense so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing you need to do, hold on. So the first thing you need to do before you start cleaning out or um, any of that are just two things that I had to, I had to do. So the first thing was to determine um, why you buy so much makeup. So do you buy a lot of makeup just because of cute packaging or do you buy a lot of makeup just because you see somebody else has it and you're like, well, they have it. I want it too. Um, or is it something different? So for me, um, I don't want to get too deep here, um, but for me, I've noticed that my buying habits change when my husband is gone. And it's not because like, oh, he's out of town, I'm going to go buy stuff. It has nothing to do with that. Oops, just dropped my notebook. Um, it has nothing to do with that. The reason I think I do it is because I'm bored. Um, you know, so that's one thing is I'm bored and I'm only, my husband, in the, the six years that we've been married, he has been gone for over three of them for deployments, um, army schools, police academies, um, things like that. So he's gone a lot. So that's one thing that I've noticed that I buy a lot when he's gone. Another thing I've noticed that um, I buy a lot of makeup when I'm feeling unhappy with the rest of my body, which I still buy makeup um, when I'm in great shape, but I don't buy as much. And I think that is because I focus more on my face when I can't focus on my body, if that makes sense. So just to kind of give a little bit of, of a background if you're kind of new to my channel. Um, about two years ago, I was in awesome shape. Run, I ran a half marathon. Um, I ran a bunch of races. Um, you know, it was awesome. I was in awesome shape. And then um, I had a hip injury that kind of slowed me down a little bit, but I was still running. And then I went and I ran a mud run back in August and I messed my foot up. So when I messed my foot up really bad, um, I went and I found out that it was like a bigger injury than what I thought it was. So I was in a boot for a while, so I was no longer like running every single day like I was. So obviously you go from running every day to not running every day, you're gonna gain some weight. So then I go to the doctor because I gained weight super, super rapidly. I go to the doctor with the whole you know, foot thing, they take some blood work and also find out on top of that I have a thyroid issue. But since I was running so much before, 
Um, the thyroid issue, although I had gained some weight while I was running, I thought my body had just become like more efficient. <laughs> so um, while I had, you know, gained all the weight or whatever, um, you know, once I was no longer able to run, like it came so quickly, my, my thyroid wasn't working properly. So on top of an injury and a thyroid issue, uh, I just was not happy with my body anymore. So obviously I'm not going to be buying a ton of clothes because I don't like the way I look in clothes anymore. So I'm going to be buying makeup. So that's pretty much where that goes. And then another thing, um, or another reason why I buy a lot other than, you know, kind of being bored and um, not being happy with my body is when I was growing up, um, which again, I don't want to get too deep here. Growing up, I did not have a lot. I didn't have a lot of extras. So it's kind of like that whole mindset of um, when you get older, I'm like, oh, I'm going to buy whatever I want, you know. So you, when you're a kid, you want all those extra things and, you know, stuff like that. Um, and then you're an adult and you can finally get them for yourself. So, um, you know, and without going into too much detail, like, as, as to why I didn't have a whole lot growing up, um, you know, I don't want to do one of those whole draw my life things, you know, like, oh, I had it so rough. Like, <laughs> I don't want to do that. But just kind of like a whole... Just a quick synopsis, I guess. My father was an alcoholic, so he pretty much drank up all the money while my parents were married. My mother finally divorced him, and she became a single mother who, she put herself through nursing school, and she was a nurse, but still being a single mother, you know, paying the mortgage, doing all that stuff. Um, you know, you don't have a ton of money for all the extras, and so that's kind of like a, I, I guess, just like a quick rundown as to why you know I didn't so the one bright spot that I had every year um, was I would go spend the summer with my grandparents I'd spend a month out of every summer summer with my grandparents um, here in Ohio I lived in Illinois at the time and my grandma would take me to the mall almost every day <laughs> uh, we would go to the mall we would go you know eat the food court we'd go by the Clinique counter she'd give me stuff from bonuses we'd go to Bath and Body Works like obviously I got like uh, you know lip gloss mascara things like that she didn't go too crazy once I got older, though, every year for Christmas, she would send me, you know, if she got a bonus, she would send it to me or she would send me makeup. So I had pretty much started out on Clinique makeup. So um, just the kind of the whole bright spot in my life was makeup, um, you know, and th things that my grandma had purchased for me. So I think that's kind of why I go back to buying so much makeup because makeup made me happy then, you know. So that's just kind of where I'm at. Everybody has different reasonings and I think you kind of need to find out well, why do you buy so much. So that I think that's why I buy so much is because when I was a kid makeup made me happy. So um, yeah, so that's the first thing is to determine why you buy so much. The second thing is to determine your needs. So um, it just depends. I stay at home with my daughter and then if I'm not at home with my daughter I go to military. At military I can only wear natural looking makeup. So, and then staying at home with Angela, I'm not wearing a ton of glittery, smoky eyes, things like that. So, to get, like, practical makeup, you need to determine your needs. So, I like makeup that's kind of, fares more on the natural side. So, that's just me. So, that's kind of, um, right there. I obviously do not need to buy any glittery makeup, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy because I'm not going to wear it. Um, and I've actually bought like glittery makeup. I bought colored mascaras, like, you know, random things like that. So then the second step, I guess, is just to determine your needs. If you were someone who works in the makeup industry or you are here on YouTube and you make a ton of money on YouTube by reviewing different products, you know, that's great. And that's probably why you have more and you need more. But just the average person like me who does not make money on YouTube, um, reviewing products, all that stuff, it it just isn't, um, I don't need it. There's no need for it. So that's that. So now to the whole how to clean out your collection thing. So I've written down some things that have really helped me. And if you guys have anything to add or any questions, just go ahead and leave them below. Um, so tip number one, and this is what everyone should do. I don't care who you are. Go through your collection and get rid of anything that has gone bad. And by gone bad, I mean like like a lip gloss that no longer smells the way it used to, or it's separated, or it's goopy, foundations that are that way, nail polishes that are dried up, powders that you can no longer get, um, like they formed a film over the top and you can no longer get product up, like anything that has gone bad, the, the texture's changed, it's not working like it's supposed to, 
um, like your mascara is dried out, just anything like that, clear it out. Just get rid of it. Tip two, I'm reading down here, get rid of anything you know that you will never wear or use. So this kind of goes back to like, um, I just got rid of all the colored mascaras. I'm not going to use them. I will use black and I will use brown. So that's pretty much it right there. So any colored mascaras, go ahead and get rid of them. If that's something, if you wear colored mascaras, obviously keep them. Um, but for me, that's kind of something I had to go through and get rid of. Anything super glittery, um, just anything that I know I'm not going to use. If I, you know, I had a bunch of um, eyeshadows and blushes, things like that. If I didn't use them in over a year. Um, so I just got rid of them. So anything that you know you're not going to use or you haven't used, just get rid of it. Um, get rid of anything that isn't flattering or you have to work too hard to make it work. So for me, it's nude lipsticks. Nude lipsticks are not flattering on me. There are a couple shades that are kind of nudish, but since I have pigmented lips and with my skin tone, um, nude, like really light pale nude pinks and peaches just look weird on me. So anything like that, just, I got rid of them. Um, so yeah, or if you have to work too hard to make it work, um, so like say, well, if I were to add this gloss and blot and then add, like mix all these lipsticks together to get the perfect shade, just don't. You'll eventually be able to find a lipstick that's the, a, a good shade for you. In the meantime, like it's just weird mixing lipsticks. I think it's gross too, like if you put one lipstick on and then you put another lipstick on or you have to dip into a gloss. Um, and everybody's different, but I find that if I look at a lipstick of mine and then I've used another lipstick on top of it, but then the other lipstick has worn onto it, it grosses me out. Same with lip gloss. I don't like to, um, if you've ever bought just like a clear gloss and then you've put it over a lipstick and then you put it back down in there, well, you've wiped off some of your lipstick. Now it's down inside your gloss. It's just gross. So I usually wear lip gloss by itself if I wear a lip gloss or I will wear a lipstick by itself. Um, or I, if I want to put a gloss over a lipstick, I'll put it on the back of my hand first and then dab it on. Um, just because I just think it's gross to swap products in and out. So, um, yeah, so if I have to work really hard and do all that and make potions and concoctions, I'm just, no. So I got rid of anything that I had to do that with. Um, and most of those just went in the trash because I'm not going to, like, give somebody, like, a half lipstick, half lip gloss, if you know what I'm saying. All right. Um, get rid of anything that gives you, like, that has given you a bad reaction or has broken you out. I mean, this should go without saying, but I don't know how many people that I've watched on YouTube that have been like, um, well, and they'll be applying a powder. I'm pretty sure this powder breaks me out, but I really like the finish it gives. What? <laughs> no, you will be able to find a powder that you like the finish and will not break you out. Um, so yeah, just don't, don't do that. Okay. Tip number five. Um, and so this might be harder for some people because they're like, oh, I'm getting rid of perfectly good products. Um, if you're getting rid of things that are like new, perfectly good, just find someone you can give them to. Um, you know, I have tons of girl cousins, uh, friends here, and, um, you know, just, just people all over that I can give makeup to um, because they don't buy it like I do. So um, it's just so easy for me to find somebody to give it to. So here's how you kind of like pare everything down. Um, and just kind of pick your favorites. So what, what I did was I went category by category. So I laid out all my blushes, opened them all up, and then I bunched like all the orange, corally tones together, all the pink tones together, purple tones, red tones, um, and the nude ones. I just kind of bunched them all together by like color. And then I swatched them all. And then I found the dupes, or the ones that were extremely close. And then I determined from that um, like what I did, I had NARS Luster, NYX Terracotta, and then I had the Milani flower looking, um, blush, um, and I forget what it was called, but it was, they're all pretty much the same color. Um, so obviously I kept the NYX because the packaging isn't bulky, um, and it's the same color as the other two. So I, uh, I mean, I kept the NARS, and I got rid of the NYX in the Milani because I obviously paid more for the NARS, the packaging wasn't bulky, so that was the right decision for me. So just depending on what texture you like most, or if there's something subtle to it that you like more, whatever, keep that one, get rid of the others, because obviously you're gonna reach for the one that's similar to that, um, that you like more the most. You're not gonna reach for the others. And especially with blushes, um, I was reading somewhere that if you use one blush continually every single day, depending on how much blush you use and the size of the blush, you could use it every single day for three to six months 
use nothing else. So if you use a blush every day for three to six months, you know, we'll go ahead and say six months. I had over a hundred blushes. That's including like cream and powder, but I had over a hundred blushes. Um, I thought that was 50 years worth of blush. <laughs> So, I mean, you kind of got to think of it that way, like, that's ridiculous. So, just keep the ones that are your absolute favorite and just get rid of the rest. Um, so, it might be kind of hard for you to do that, but also when you do that, um, you won't buy as much because you're like, oh, I don't really need it. I have something similar. So, it's really eye-opening in that respect as well. So, I mean, I did that with lipsticks, eyeshadows, everything that was really similar, I got rid of whichever one I decided not to keep. So, pretty much the determining factors were, were me, for me. I usually either kept the newer one or the one that cost cost more or if there was something subtle about it that I liked a little bit more than the other that's the one I kept so it just really depends okay um, so okay so tip number five so this is kind of like um, what I call the seasonal clean out and so this takes a little bit longer you can't just dive into your collection and determine what you're gonna keep all in one day. This is something that you continually have to do. So, um, and that's especially true for foundations, powders, concealers, because your skin tone, not your skin tone, but like your skin shade does change throughout the year. Most people get a little bit darker in the summer, a little bit more pale in the winter. So what I do is, so say I bought a foundation this winter to match my skin that's light, but in the summer it's, it's obviously too light for me. Well, when next winter rolls around and I use that light shade, if I don't use it up by the end of that winter, I throw it out. So if I happen to buy a foundation that was too dark for me this winter and I haven't gotten rid of it yet or didn't give it to somebody, I'm going to try it out this summer. If it ends up still being too dark this summer or the tone not quite right, I will give it to someone because I know that it's never going to work for me. So that's kind of how you have to determine um, all of those things. So. I mean, I hope that I hope you kind of understand, you know, where I'm going with that. So I never really keep anything as far as foundations or whatever. Um, I've 18 months is like the longest I keep it because you got to think. So say I used a foundation that's super light this winter. Next winter I can still use the foundation that's good, but the winter after that it's probably no longer going to be good. So at the end of next winter, or you know what I'm saying, at the end of this winter, if I bought it last year, I'm just going to toss it because it's probably no longer good, if that makes any sense. So, um, and that's another thing, just don't overbuy foundations and things like that because um, they will either separate if they're really liquidy and they just, they could possibly break you out, build bacteria, especially if it's not a pump bottle, if it's exposed to air or your fingers, anything like that, um, bacteria will build, it can break you out. If you're using it like a BB cream or something like that and you're using it for the sunscreen, the sunscreen is only really good for about a year. So if you're using it primarily for the sunscreen benefits or any skincare benefits, that's only good for a year. So if you haven't used it within a year, you're going to have to toss it if you're using it for the benefits because they're no longer going to really work. All right, so now that I've pretty much told you how to clean it out, I'm going to talk about how to keep it condensed. So my first tip is... Um, don't buy makeup just to build your collection because that's only going to do a couple things for you. So say you're just starting out and you're like, oh, I want all this makeup because, you know, I want to be able to achieve all these looks. Okay, you can do that um, if you're, you know, wanting to play around and achieve looks. And the best way to do that is, you know, buy palettes, whatever, to build your look but, or to build your collection. But once your collection is built don't keep doing that because if you're just buying makeup say you buy makeup when it's on sale um, like say the CVS has that 50 and 75 percent off sale like every six months to get rid of stuff that's usually stuff that's being discontinued so if you get really attached to a product chances are it's being discontinued and you're not going to be able to use it again um, or it's been sitting in the store for so long too since they're discontinuing it that it may not even work that well I mean I bought some mascaras last year and I opened them up and they were dried out so, um, you know, that's just kind of something. And then I, if I buy it just because it's on sale, I didn't really even think about it. I'm like, oh, that's cheap. I buy it and then I don't use it. So, um, your, your money is going to be better spent if you just kind of make a list of the things that you absolutely want and, um, and you just kind of buy from that list and, you know, you do it that way. And also for me, 
I'm going to have to start going to counters and testing things out. Not buying blindly online because something new came out. Um, I'm just going to have to go test it out. And what you can return things, and I'm really bad about that. I never return things, and that's something I need to work on. Um, but just like kind of go and test things out, see if that's something you really want. Try to think back and be like, do I have anything else in my collection that can achieve a similar look um, to, to determine whether or not you need it. So don't buy makeup just to build a collection and have one of those big, huge collections just because, because you're not going to end up using it. So um, that's, I guess, that tip. Um, tip number two is, again, kind of go through like the first portion of the video, like just continually scan your collection and just get rid of anything that you're not using or whatever. Tip number three is buy things as you need them. So you run out of mascara, you run out of foundation, then go buy a new one. That way you're not forcing yourself to use products that are about to expire or products that you're not really crazy about. And you're also enjoying it because you're like, oh, this is new and I get to use it and it's a lot more fun to use it than it is be like, oh, I bought this two years ago. Oh my God, like I just need to use it up. So um, makeup's not fun when you have to do that and you just buy too much. So if you kind of buy high quality items, buy a few of them, you know, just buy a few pieces every season, um, I think that you're really going to enjoy doing your makeup and playing with your makeup a lot more than just buying a bunch of, you know, uh, crappy clearance items, you know, whatever. So yeah, just buy things as you need them. Um, yeah, so there's that. So I guess um, the last thing I have to say that kind of doesn't fit into those, but it's still useful is do not buy something and then tell yourself that you're only going to save it for special occasions because it's going to go bad before the special occasions even come up. So if you buy it and you absolutely love it, then use it as much as possible. Again, makeup goes a long way. And, um, you know, like one thing can last months and months, you know, without going, you know, going dry. Like say the only things that do not, um, that don't last a very long time, like your powder products all last a very long time, you know, like you're not going to go through a powder product super, super fast. The things that don't last a long time are like foundations, mascaras, eyeliners, um, those sorts of things. So, and usually those aren't something that you're trying to save for a special occasion anyway. Same with perfume. Don't just save a perfume for a special occasion. Perfume's only really good for a couple years before it st the scent starts changing. So, um, yeah, I mean, just don't save it for a special occasion because it's never going to come up and you're going to end up having to throw it out before you use it. So, um, I can't think of anything else to add in here. I hope this was helpful. Um, I'm kind of going into a no-buy now. So, well, not really a no-buy. I find that when I constrict myself that I end up going crazy and I'm <laughs> buying a lot more than what I need. That doesn't work for me. But I've come to the realization that... I enjoy makeup more if I lo absolutely love the products um, that I'm using and I and I now have a sense of the products that I like. So um, I think this year, I mean, unless there's something that comes out that's absolutely phenomenal and I have nothing like it, the only things I'm going to be purchasing are things that I've run out of, um, like foundation or mascara, something like that. Um, I have a small list of items that I want to try and that's also something you can do. Write a list of things that you absolutely want to try and um, when you run out of something or you feel like you're absolutely in need of it, go ahead and buy it. Like I want to try the La Mer powder um, and what else was on my list and the Hourglass, two of the Hourglass blushes I kind of have on my list. So I mean things like that. So I'm not going to put a monetary budget or even um, I can buy 12 items this year. Um, I'm not going to put any sort of restrictions like that, but I know that I just need to kind of stick to my list and the things that I need. So um, I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, again, leave them below, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.